everyone and welcome. Today's Mass is being offered for Tiffany Alexander, requested by the family, Donald Stacy, requested by the Egan's, John and uh, Catherine Paholak, requested by the family, and Christina and Frank Paholak, requested by the family. And we begin our prayers on this nice, bright, sunny day. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we ask for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. As we approach the altar of the Lord, we take a moment. A moment to call to mind how much in need we are of the gift of God's mercy in our lives. Lord, have mercy. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the, from the book of Job. Job spoke to his friends. 
Does not the human being have a hard service on earth? And are not their days like the days of a laborer? Like a slave who longs for the shadow, and like a laborer who looks for their wages, so I am allotted months of emptiness, and nights of misery are apportioned to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I rise? But the night is long, and I am full of tossing until dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, and come to their end without hope. Remember that my life is a breath. My eye will never again see good. The word of the Lord. St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me. And woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might be all means, save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As soon as Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. They told Jesus about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to Jesus all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I have come to, out to do. And Jesus went through Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we listened in the first reading, we heard from Job. And Job is an interesting book of the gospel. He shares how life is a drudgery. And he goes on to say, My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to their end without hope. Job expresses feelings that we can identify with. A lot of bad stuff came down and hurt Job in his life. Job asks the question, why? Why God? Why me? Each of us has probably felt this at one time or another, that life is unfair, or that things just do not add up. They do not make sense. Like when things really, really get bad, eh? When misfortune comes our way, or we feel the pain of life, because of broken relationships. It really can feel that happiness will never come our way again. We can start telling ourselves that I will never be happy again. Hope seems nowhere to be found. And all sorts of heartbreak is the most empty feeling of all. And the first reading concludes with Job saying, Remember that life is just a breath, and I shall not see happiness again. And of course, our response to the Word of God is, thanks be to God. Is that really our response? Well, I don't know. Certainly it isn't when we come to the conclusion that perhaps I'll never be happy again. We heard in the responsorial psalm, praise God who heals the brokenhearted. And you know, broken hearts, by their very definition, feel broken beyond repair. And I remember a story in the news that kind of really touched me. It was a man who was on his wedding night, he was at his reception, and there was a guest who was drunk and seemed to be causing a lot of stress. And a big scene kind of broke out. And the groom stepped in trying to intervene to bring calm to the situation. The man pulled out a gun and shot him and he died. And I remember thinking, oh my God, the bride. Wow. The day that started with tears of joy was ending, ending with horror and tragedy of weeping. Her marriage only lasted a few hours. Or a mother who loses her child. Broken hearts, really feel broken beyond repair in the midst of these situations and experiences. 
and that there is nothing that can be done. Often, that's the feeling. They'll never feel happiness again. And feelings aren't right or wrong. We all have them. Okay? They're just feelings. But we do have them. That's why St. Paul, in the second reading today, preaches the gospel is nothing to brag about. I have a compulsion. I have no choice. Woe to me if I was not to say it. I must preach. Why? Because the brokenhearted must be told that God can heal. And can heal their broken heart and repair it. We simply believe because God can do the impossible. When your heart is broken, you can feel as though it is impossible. That we will ever kind of sense peace again. You can feel that your heart may never be healed. And we can also cry out in pain. When will the crying stop? And St. Paul tells us that as disciples in Christ, we must tell the truth. There is a sense of urgency in him that people of God must be told that there is a God who can heal the broken hearts. There is a God who can bring hope to hopeless situations. There is a God with a joy that can overcome all of our sorrows. There is a God with joy that can bring life even in the midst of facing death. God can mend our broken heart. At times, though, we may struggle to believe it when the hurt is really bad. The mending of our hearts can seem like an impossibility. And usually we convince ourselves that the hurt will only go away if we are to secure whatever is broken or broken in. Perhaps we long for a particular person or a resolution to a conflict or a job etc. It goes on and on. And the truth is that whatever it is, we can only truly be healed by the one who is healing itself. There is a God who had a son. His name is Jesus. And he went from town to town healing the broken heart. Everyone was coming to see him because everyone needs a God like that. Because in this world, we can't avoid but experience a broken heart. But we do not have to stay there. While weeping might endure, like Job saying, a long, long night. It seems dawn is never going to come. Well, let me ask you a question. In your lifetime, your entire lifetime, no matter how old you are or how long you live, have you ever experienced a winter that did not yield to spring or summer? Or have you ever experienced a night that did not become the dawn? Yeah, it's there. Keep that in mind when we bump into these seasons of change. Because just like Job in his life had a very wonderful relationship with God and then he had this season of difficulty, he ended his life in a wonderful season of relationship with God too. Season change. Joy comes up in the morning if we persevere in faith in the God who can heal broken hearts. That's the great good news that Jesus wants to heal our broken heart and he helps us. And Paul says we need to go out and tell the world, especially those who are experiencing broken hearts, that God can heal broken hearts. Let us stand and profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now bring our petitions before the Lord. God hears the prayers of the humble, so let us bring our needs before him with humility and confidence that he is the one who can heal the broken heart. For Christians everywhere, that how they bear their sufferings may bring hope and courage to others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who care for the sick, whether at home or in health care settings, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here, that we may be sensitive to the sufferings of those around us and ensure that they do not have to bear their burdens alone, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn the loss of loved ones, that they may know God's consolation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For doctors and nurses and all who work for the sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in this congregation, that through our own sufferings, we may learn to feel the sufferings of others and show them compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our sick relatives and friends, we pray for those names listed in our bulletin sick list, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our loved ones who have died, those who died this past week, especially Luca Divina and Father Noel Whalen, and all those who rest in our cemeteries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we look out to our world full of conflict and strife, we pray for peace as we ask Our Lady to intercede, especially in Ukraine and the Middle East. And we pray together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God of love, help us to hear from your Son, who shows us your compassion in the face of human suffering, and healer of the broken hearts. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that this, my sacrifice and yours, will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. O Lord, our God, who established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that we may be... It, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels, with the thrones and dominions, with the hosts of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end. We acclaim. Therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis our Pope, Francis our Bishop, and all the clergy, with the entire people your son has gained for his own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine mystery, we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Offer each other some sign of that peace.
Just a couple of brief announcements. Just a reminder, uh, the EDGE program is tomorrow at one o'clock for our young people. And um, our uh, bereavement team is still working away on Saturday mornings. So that'll be uh, at 10 a.m. to 12 every Saturday morning in the basement of the hall. Um, the CWL has something special this week. It's on Thursday night. They have um, uh, someone from the police department coming out to speak about human trafficking. And uh, it's really quite an interesting subject. And of course, it's good for us to have our heads out of the sand instead of putting them in the sand, which is uh, kind of our human characteristic. But um, so I'm glad the ladies have done that. Um, also following um, the first Friday Stations to the Cross, which will be on the 16th of February, um, we'll have, they're gonna have soup downstairs. So it's just a simple soup after for a chance to get together. But um, I shouldn't say it's a simple soup. It will be their, their, it's their, how can I put it? Their signature soups that are gonna be available downstairs. It's not just meant to, I just, I don't know how to explain that. I, it's no easy way to explain that, but it's their sing, signature soups. Um, also, Young Adult Ministry has something coming up on next Saturday. So next Saturday, February 10th, it's 7 o'clock. Our young adults are having hockey night in Canada. So they're walking, watching the hockey game downstairs. So that's one of their social things they do. So it's for um, people who are 18 to 35 who want to join uh, them. Do so, 7 o'clock, hockey night in Canada. Um, there'll be no alcohol served, though. That will be the only thing that will be perhaps odd compared to you having it at home. Um, just a reminder that um, um, February 14th is uh, the beginning of Lent. It's Ash Wednesday. Um, that doesn't let you guys off the hook for taking your wives out to dinner, though. So if you, you can fast earlier on in the day, and I'll give you a dispensation if it's about love for your wife and Valentine's. So keep that in mind. Also, uh, Stations Across will happen every Friday during, during Lent. And um, I'm sure I'm probably forgetting something, but um, I always like to end, end with a bit of a joke. Um, uh, there's a, uh, on the first day of school, a kindergarten teacher said to her class, she said, if anyone has to go to the washroom, please hold up two fingers. And of course, a little voice came from the back of the classroom and said, how will holding up two fingers help? <laughs> yes, didn't quite get it. Eh? Um, I don't know if that's such a funny one, but uh, certainly um, I had a wonderful opportunity. Sylvia got a new puppy uh, a few months ago, and um, I was over there to check out the puppy, and of course, here's the puppy chasing his tail, right? Running around chasing his tail. And, you know, I thought, boy, is it ever easy for dogs to amuse themselves? And then then I realized that I was amused by watching the dog chase the tail. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. Eh? <laughs> Have a blessed, glorious, and wonderful week. Let us stand and pray. O God, who with will that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, Grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. I'd like to thank Teo and um, Naya for being here on the altar, and of course, Anthony and Sylvia for singing. They do such a wonderful job. Have a blessed week.